Hello and welcome to a narrowboat you might recognise if you've been watching the channel for a while. This is Hadar, a modern replica of a classic working boat whose vintage engine I showcased in vlog 130. But the engine isn't the only treat to be found here, as under the tarpaulin, over what used to be a cargo hold, there's an entire village called Haderford, a model village built around a model railway and a model canal. And yes, Hadar is a standard narrowboat, just 6 feet 10 inches wide, with the railway layout on both sides of the boat, including a complete circle of track. This layout came about when myself and my wife stopped carrying coal with our narrowboat. And my wife turned around to me one day and she said, what are we going to do with the hold now? And I said, I don't know. She said, well, why don't you build a model railway in it? So I did. The major part of the layout actually is not the railway, it is actually the canal scene. And because we live on a canal boat, this is quite important to me. I wanted to get as close a representation of what a typical canal would be like um, within the limitations of things available on the market, what I could physically achieve in modelling. And there lies the rub, because modelling on a narrowboat, it turns out, comes with some unique challenges, especially when you're trying to create a canal. Most narrowboats are higher at the bow than they are at the stern. And because I was going to use resin, mix it and pour it in, we had to be certain that the canal was actually sitting, the, the, the boat was sitting level. So the only right time we could do this was in dry dock. So the, 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 the layout was planned around that we'd get the layout to a suitable, um, suitable position where we could go into dry dock, and immediately we're in dry dock, I could mix the resin and pour it in. I am happy with the results, not as perfect as I had hoped. Um, because we had to use the resin in one go, rather than layering it, um, I have ended up with some cracks in it, but that is an unfortunate thing. We did, at the time, it wasn't amusing, we laugh at it now, we did have a leaky canal lock. The trouble is the resin is, is to be able to pour it in, you have to be certain that every little hole is filled up, and I hadn't, and it was leaking out underneath. And there was my good wife, Jo, underneath with the gaffer tape, trying to stop it leaking out. And eventually we did, and um, I did have to top it up eventually to, to get the right height, but we got there in the end. For the technically minded, this is double O scale, but a narrow gauge railway at that scale. For the non-technical, it means the trains are small, which is obviously better for a small space. Whereas the standard gauge track would be four foot eight and a half uh, between the rails, narrow gauge is two foot. So all the buildings, all the vehicle, the cars, the lorries, the people are all double O scale, but it's just the trains and the track are the smaller narrow gauge, which in terms of building it on the boat worked out a lot better because had I tried to do it in the standard gauge, I wouldn't have been able to get in the tight curves that I've had to use to be able to get round the whole boat. That requirement was not only because the boat is so narrow, but also for one unusual but overriding design concern. We have to have access into the room from the rest of the boat. We've also got to have access out into the front of the hold, the remainder of the hold. Um, but not only our personal access, it's the only route through the boat that we can get our washing machine and our fridge freezer in and out if we need to. They won't go the other way out of the boat. So everything about the layout of the layout has been uh, designed with the ability to still be able to get those two appliances in and out of the boat. That included not only running a single track width down part of it, so as to ensure space between the layout and a supporting beam in the boat, but also the need for two removable track sections which join the two sides of the layout. These bridges slot into place when needed, with the electric supply joined up underneath, and that means the layout becomes a complete circuit which the trains can run around continuously. The whole imaginary world has been thought out with such detail that Keith even has lists of the inhabitants with notes about their lives. Starting from behind me, right up in the corner, this is Haderford Village, 
um, starting with the church, and then you've got all the uh, shops on that from the from the village, running alongside the canal. There is a canal lock um, in the village, and then of course alongside that is the railway runs down, passes underneath a bridge, which has got the the obligatory canal side pub, um, then a canal wharf where I've actually got a model of Haydar on the wharf with models of myself and my wife on the back of a boat. From the canal, we then move into the station area, which has a double track, whereas most of the line is single track. The station has a double track, so I can actually have trains passing in the station. And then there's a bridge which crosses across the boat to a small area which has got a uh, castle ruins and a permanent way depot. From then there's a long retaining wall which then leads into the fiddle yard. Now fiddle yard is a model railway term. It's a yard that you can fiddle about in and it basically represents the rest of the railway and you can you can have trains stored in it ready to go at the press of a button um, without having to put them on, take them off, put them on. Um, it's a fairly common feature with model railways. Keith's always liked model railways since getting a train set from his parents when he was 10, and he's previously built exhibition standard designs. He has a compact worktop which folds down from the boat side, on which he can create his models and test them. For me, it's achieving something close to realism. Um, as close to real life as possible in a model form. Because we're used to running a working narrowboat, all the strings holding up the sheeting are all tied on with the correct knots using a needle and cotton. One of the new innovations which has only um, come about with model railways in the last sort of decade is a thing called static grass. It's actually small grains of, of uh, material which using static electricity makes them stand up. So it actually looks like grass is standing up as it should do. Um, fairly common in use these days, but um, bearing in mind that going back to when I started, we didn't have things like that. We just had coloured scatter that you uh, laid down some glue on the baseboard or, or whatever you were onto, and then you just sprinkled the stuff off. And in fact, some of the gardens, I've done it like that because to represent lawns, which would be nicely uh, mowed, um, which you can't get with the static grass. Keith's love for modelling is evident everywhere you look, with lots of little jokes and amusing details. Take the church, to which Keith's dark humour added a graveside scene, complete with anguished mourners and a hole in the ground for the coffin and every time you peer in closely, you see more intricate and delightful details. From putting down the baseboards to calling it notionally finished took a year, and some parts were really quite fiddly to make. The roads is actually emery paper, glued down and then painted, and then all the road marks painted on there with all the pedestrian crossings and everything. That took a lot of time to do that. One issue you don't get in home layouts is condensation dripping off the gunnels, for which Keith has had to add overhead drain pipes to collect drips before they hit the track. 
With the layout finished by and large, you might wonder what next. But having a large store of models at his disposal, Keith can rearrange things to suit his mood. I have a lot of road vehicles that I can swap around. Probably about a third of them are on the layout at any one time. So I can rotate things. Like, for instance, at the Station Hotel, um, the Haderford Car Club often meet and you have various sections of the club. So you have the Jaguar section, you have the Lotus section. At the moment, today, it's the Triumph section meeting there. Um, so I, I, I can rotate the vehicles, but I've, I've got these stackable trays that I use, um, which I can store everything in. But um, the trays that I've got, I can't get any more. We haven't got any room for any more. Once they're full, that's it. <laughs> He says he hasn't kept a record of what the layout cost him, but the pleasure it's brought to him and many others is surely immeasurable. The intention was always that, that I could have it here. I could sit here in my chair in the middle and just watch the trains go round and round and round. I certainly wouldn't build another one in a narrowboat. Um, there are complications with it. it. It was more or less a case we had the space. If we hadn't have done this, we'd have just filled it up with junk. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.